Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial and this time we're looking at the BSE speed effect. That is the speed effect that you can apply to a clip in the video sequence editor timeline. Now I have imported a clip and I have generated some proxies so that I can actually get playback. Let me delete the speed strip and show you. There is the playback. An athlete high-fiving as he walks along. What I'm imagining is maybe I would like to make a pause frame here so we can see the athlete high-fiving. How can we do that? Well, there's a number of ways to achieve this. The easiest way is that we can highlight the clip and we can press Shift-K to split the clip and that produces a hard um, freeze frame at the point of the, of the edit. If I select the end of the previous clip with shift right click and we press G to drag our clip along you can see that this clip the newly created half of the media is moving to the right and I'm dragging or extending the previous clip but because there's no media there it's being turned into a hard edit it will do a freeze frame so if I press refresh sequencer and play that back it will pause and then start again. So anywhere I move my still frame and my other clip will extend the freeze frame. So that's just like pressing pause on a video. But what if I want to slow down into this pause? Well that requires a different blender effect. Let's select the clip by right clicking on it, press shift A and add an effect strip. I'm going to add a speed control effect by default you'll notice that it plays back at full speed. If we scroll down with the speed effect active, you can see that it's on stretch to input strip length. So if I change the length of the input strip, it will speed up or slow down the original media. So if we put it back here, you'll notice that it plays back quickly. And if I stretch it right out, it plays back more slowly. Now, we want to do the pause frame. So how do we do that? Let's try to press the I key here or right mouse click and produce an, a keyframe and I can't produce a keyframe. In fact, if I press I, I get a little alert at the top saying multiply speed cannot, property cannot be uh, animated. So we have to turn off stretch to import strip length. And now it's not doing anything because the speed factor is set to zero. So let's change that to one and play that back. So now the clip is effectively playing at speed of one or 100%. So what we need to do is produce some keyframes to create our pause. Let's change this window here to a graph editor. Make a bit of room. And I'm going to say I would like to pause here. I'm going to keyframe this value and move back here. I'd like to start slowing down here. I'm going to keyframe this value. So let's jump back to the first one. I'll type in zero and press I to change the keyframe. In the graph editor, I'm going to press the home key to zoom that up and you can see but now it's playing 100% and it slows down. Oh, but it doesn't slow down. What's wrong? Well, I have to press refresh sequencer for the sequencer to remember the frames that I need to animate. It doesn't always animate the values in the VSE without pressing refresh sequencer. Now the problem here is that where I originally wanted him to pause is not in the correct location. So, I'm going to expand a dope sheet which shows me keyframes and I can slide the keyframes backwards and forwards. So I actually wanted him to pause a little bit further on. Because I have this ramp, it's actually not pausing at the correct place. If I uh, change the interpolation type by pressing T and choose constant, now it will play along to the correct point. That's where I wanted him to pause there. But because I had the ramp turned on, it was ramping down to the wrong point. So this, the frame that I actually want is further down here. So that 
Easiest way, I guess, is to park further down the timeline, make sure I have both of the keyframes selected and press G and constrain with the X key and slide that along. And press refresh sequencer again. And now it's pausing in the correct place. And you can see that it ramps down to this position. If I want it to ramp more slowly, I can drag this first keyframe back, G and constrain to the X. And up here, you can see that the, the angle of attack is much more gentle and therefore will slow down more. Ah, but again, I have that problem of not being parked in the correct place. So I'll have to park along here again, press G and X and drag to the right to get it to the right place. And now I can, now it's updating and I can see it. And now when I go back and play, it stops at the right place. Now if I want him to start again, I press another keyframe, I, and you can see it's a hold keyframe. I'll go back up here, press I again, make that value of one, press I, and now you can see it ramps back up. So if I play over this, it will ramp down slowly, produce a still, and then start to speed back up. Oh, it's not speeding up, so I need to press refresh sequencer again. Slow down, pause, speed back up again. Now the problem with all of this is that what used to be 100% playback is now being uh, used up so my frame value is changing. So I need to um, accommodate that at the end. Now if I was editing with other clips, if I had another clip here, Shift G, if there was another clip here and that it was bumping into, then obviously I don't want it to make my edit change length probably. So the fact that the keyframe, the, the frame values are spilling out past the edit point is fine. But what if I want it to be longer? Well, then I would have to grab the end handle and drag it out to give it more length to uh, fill in those extra frames. So now it will play out to the end and pause when it runs out of frames at some point. All right, there we go, pause there. So the difference between this point and this point is how much I slowed down in the interim for the speed effect. So I added a whole bunch of frames onto the end to accommodate that speed down, speed back up again. Now that's one way of performing a, a speed ramp. Another way is to change this to a frame number value. So let me reset that. In fact, I'll reset back to here. Clicking on the speed effect. Enter the frame number that I'm going to start with. I think it starts at frame zero. Press it, I for keyframe, go to the end of that clip. I believe it's, let's see how long that is. So we'll scroll up, it's 255 frames long. So I'm going to type in 255, press I for a keyframe. Home to zoom my graph. You can see there's a ramp here, so it's actually going to speed up. Uh, refresh sequencer again. Slow, 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 speeds up, plays a little bit quickly in the middle and then it slows back down again at the end. So that might be a nice effect, but it's not what we really want. So I'm going to press the T key, whoops, T key, press linear, so that I get a straight acceleration, or an even acceleration. Now if I want to pr produce a pause frame using frame numbers, I would park on the frame that I want to pause on, this, our favorite frame, press I for keyframe, and down here in the dope sheet, I want to select that keyframe and the following keyframe. Um, press Shift D to duplicate them and move them across. Now you can see they're both hold frames. This is correct. I want this to hold. Press Refresh Sequencer again so that we hold and then play. But now it's playing too quickly. You can see up here that our angle of attack is different. So the acceleration is different. So what I need to do is delete the original keyframe. And now that ramp is the same angle as the one below. But the added benefit now is that we know how much longer I need to make the clip to accommodate this end frame. So this was the last frame previously. And now I have made the pause this long. So I need to stretch it out to there to accommodate that press refresh sequencer. And there it goes. So 
go through our pores and then continue on. The problem is that you cannot really create a Bezier curve from these lines. I guess I would have to make this pause region longer to accommodate the speed ramp. And I might want to create a keyframe here, I, another keyframe here, to make sure I preserve that pause region, and then delete this keyframe, and select this one and create a Bezier curve from that so that it ramps into that position. Uh, likewise, I would want to create another keyframe, I keyframe, and up here, I, another keyframe, delete the one in the middle, and then T, we want to make that a Bezier curve. So again, it's created a curve, so we play that through, and it pauses in the right place, and then ramps back out again. That's how you create a ramped speed with the VSE speed effect tool. There's multiple ways. As a bonus, you can also add modifiers. If we add a uh, mm, we add a noise modifier, you can actually apply noise to the readout, refresh the sequencer, and you can get this sort of back and forth effect, scratching effect for your video. If you like that effect of moving backwards and forwards, but you'd rather that they, rather that they were hold frames, so that they look like a um, strobing effect, you can turn on stepped interpolation. Let's see what that does. Frame stepping, you can see that if I zoom in, it's holding those frames for two frames at a time. What if we make them larger? Six or seven frame holds refresh sequencer again and play that back. And of course if we turn off the noise and we just hold the steps and it's just a strobe effect, we'll refresh sequencer again then it's just a strobe effect. Pause and continue. So go crazy, you can add all sorts of effects here. Uh, I liked the um, built-in function. If you make it an additive sign value, you can get a little wiggle. Refresh sequencer. And it can look like broken video if you really want. I don't know how this will go through compression. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching this little short tutorial about using the speed effect in Blender. And uh, enjoy that. Uh, don't forget, you can always play things backwards. They don't have to go forwards.